here's your opportunity to listen and learn from the most successful people driving growth and success in Palm Beach County and beyond. Welcome to the Business in Paradise Palm Beach podcast with Carrie Stamp, founder of Carrie Stamp and Company, Principled Wealth Advisors. Carrie and his guests share stories and insights from Palm Beach County's most successful executives, entrepreneurs, and community leaders. Learn how they made it to where they are today, what principles guide them, how they mentor others to achieve success, and more. Welcome to the Business in Paradise podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Stamp. I'm a certified financial planner in Tequesta, Florida, and I interview people that have built fantastic businesses in South Florida, primarily Palm Beach County. But my guest today has a business that reaches across the state of Florida, and he has deep roots in the industry uh, that he is having enormous success in today. Today, I'm proud to have my friend on the podcast, Matt Carroll, who's the CEO of Hoover Architectural Products. Matt runs a company here in South Florida that's been in business for a very long time. Matt, welcome to Business in Paradise. Great to be here. Thank you, Gary. Matt, tell us a, a little bit about the history of Hoover Architectural. And your last name, by the way, isn't Hoover. How did it get that name? Sure. So Hoover was actually founded as Hoover Canvas Products by Mr. Henry Hoover in 1949. They originally started doing sails and tarps and fabric awnings and, and the like. So a lot of canvas products and repairs and whatnot. The company started specializing in fabric awnings in the early 60s. They, they owned and operated Hoover Canvas Products for about what, 40 years until 1979 when my great uncle came in and bought the company. Then my Carroll family took over running it, expanding to West Palm Beach in 1995. And so we've had a long history of doing it. So canvas and awning products, give us some examples of who, who your primary customers are that buy these products. Sure. Our primary customers are commercial and residential customers, consumers, whether they want to, residential customers want to cover back patios or, or restaurants, get some big fabric canopies or even valet canopies for commercial establishments. So big mix between residential and commercial. So I could buy one of these for my house if I wanted a shaded area, keep me out of the sun and out of the rain. Absolutely. No, it's great for all weather protection. It's much more cost effective than traditional building methods, which is kind of neat now. We're seeing a, a, a shift in traditional building methods from your, your larger fixed structures to go into tensioned and sale products. And that's actually where my family started back in Annapolis, Maryland five generations ago, doing sales for ships and storefronts. They would do sales for coverage before the advent of air conditioning. So this is pretty deep in your blood. Five generations of carols doing some type of work with sales or awning or canvas. Running some machines and the rest. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. So your great uncle buys the company in 1979. Take uh, And your father goes to work for him at the same time? He did. Yeah. Okay. Take us through that progression. How long does your great uncle run the company and then what happens to it? Yeah. So Hoover was actually probably the fourth or fifth company that my great uncle purchased in Southeast Florida and kind of each one rolling up, rolling up, rolling up. And then the Hoover was the crown jewel. That was when I kind of put the icing on top of the cake. So he ran it, I want to say until about 1995, uh, 93, 95, which my dad was working with him and building the business and whatnot. But my uncle, I think, fully retired in 1995. And uh, my dad ran the company um, from then until about 2014. So, and then in 2014, my dad retired and I took over. So your third generation just in this particular uh, awning business in Palm Beach County. Yeah. And then we have a sister company up in Maryland that has uh, my uncle and, and cousin running that one up there. Same type of uh, same type of business, same type of product. Same type of business, fabric awnings, and you know a little bit different. They have to deal with snow loads and different types of exposure up there, but yeah, very very similar businesses. So Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself. You you are a South Florida product. You grew up down here. Uh, you went to school somewhere in Florida, uh, and then you came back and ran the company. What what was that progression like? Yeah, so I was um, born in Baltimore, Maryland, but grew up and raised in in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was a great place to grow up and played a lot of baseball and got my pilot's license and had a lot of fun there. And high school attended Cardinal Gibbons High in Fort Lauderdale and then played some baseball at Broward Community College and then went to UCF. 
at University of Central Florida. But just study at UCF, if anything. Yeah, we'll study, have, have a lot of it fun, but study business management with a minor in marketing. Okay. It's definitely good, good to have those experiences and classes under my belt and getting into the business life. So do you come back and immediately start to work for Hoover? Sure. So during high school and, and college breaks and winter breaks, I would come back and work during those breaks. So I, yeah, right after high school, I, or right after college rather, came back and started with the business full-time working with Hoover. And when you went into the business, I assume that you didn't just start at, at the top level because your last name was the same last name as the owner. What were some of the things that you had to do so that you learned the awning business? Well, it was funny. I asked my dad and said, hey, so if I uh, go to college, where do I start? He said, you start in a paint shop. If I don't go to college, where do I start? He said, you start in a paint shop. No matter what, you got to learn from business from ground up. And that's kind of been his rule of thumb. And each phase and, and part of the business I had to learn, I actually really didn't study under him per se. I was underneath the installation manager when I was learning to install and underneath the frame manager when I was learning frame shop. So I yeah, really got taught by some very dedicated and powerful employees. So Matt, one of the things that I always talk about is the fact that I'm so grateful for some of the mentors, some of the people that have helped me in my business, because we don't just walk into our business and automatically know how to do everything or how to do everything well. So I'm always asking people that I think know a little bit more than I do about how to run the business or about how to do something particular in the business. Do you have some people that you've had to rely on over the years that you would say, these have been some critical mentors to me. They're very important. 100%. And the great thing about Hoover and the family company, we're really tight. And my mentors still work for us. While I own the company now and, and they you know, technically work for me, we work as a team. And you know, we, we all have the same experiences in different facets of the business. When there's a problem to be solved, we work together and all respect each other so much. And it's really a tight family, you know, working together. But there's five you know, different mentors within a business that you are wonderful people to work with. As you're going through your daily work in the business and you're kind of running the overall strategy and operations of the business, do you have a strategic planning team? And how do you do planning for long-term growth of Hoover Architectural, which is now Hoover Architectural, and we didn't even address that issue? How, how does this company continue to grow year after year after year fairly consistently? The Hoover Canvas Awnings, which, which Hoover originally started as, didn't really encompass who we were as we grew. And then it just grew in Hoover Awnings and then Hoover Architectural Products because we not only do fabric awnings, but we do architectural metal and, and anything on the exterior of a building that provides shade or, or weather protection. But when I took over in 2014, I, we put together what's called the Hoover Insights Team. And this is a team that meets monthly and quarterly. And, and at the end of every year, we kind of have a wrap-up meeting and, and talk about where what, what we did that year and, and how, what we accomplished, what we didn't accomplish, what we fell short on, what we could have done better on, and what we did really, really well. And our goal is to change three to five things about the business every year. And if we can just make small, minor adjustments year after year after year, those add up into major changes. And that's kind of what we focus on. But it, without the insights team, which are basically you know, the mentors and people I grew up with in the business, we, we wouldn't be half the company we are today. That sounds like a great way to do some planning year end and reflect and then try to figure out where you're going. How'd you come up with that idea? And do you even remember how that came about? <laughs> Actually, I want to say it was part of my Vistage group, belonging to Vistage and, and being having, having so many business mentors available to me in that group listening to what they do, how they plan, what the owner's role is and what the what the strategic team's role is. And, you know, and I'll, I'll come up with a general direction and vision, say, guys, here's where I want to be in five years and here's how approximately we're going to get there. And we kind of put our heads together as a group and and take ownership in those in those decisions that are going to lead us the way and get us there. And for our listeners that are not familiar with Vistage, Vistage is a international business owners organization that puts groups of business owners in, in the community together to strategize and act as an outside board of directors and essentially become a mastermind group that different business owners in different industries can use as a sounding board for ideas that they want to implement in their company or how they can continue to grow and eventually how they can even exit their business. If you haven't heard it, I've got a phenomenal podcast. Look in the stream 
for a podcast with States Hines, who's a director of the Vistage Group that both Matt and I belong to, and talking about how you can use a group like that to rapidly turbocharge, basically, the business as you operate. I just had lunch with a lady today, and I said to her, the only mistake I made as far as uh, Vistage was not joining it sooner. Because I think we probably, uh, you, you actually probably been in, in a group longer than I have, but I have gained so much knowledge and insight from being part of it. It's a fantastic group. Yeah. So also talk to us about a little bit how you would see the culture of Hoover. I mean, the, the people that work there, you've got some multi-generational family members, you've got people that worked for your family for many, many years. What's it like if you're, if you're a Hoover employee? What's it like for a Hoover employee? You know, it's, gosh, and it's kind of cliche, but it's a family and, and we all interact together and we work together and we're with, our, with the people we work with, you know, probably more than we are with our family at home. You know, but we care about each other and we listen and, and probably more than anything is we have each other's back. And when there's mistakes that happen, we pick each other up and, and you know, or we'll, we'll catch a mistake before it happens and say, you know, hey, you know, look out for this because we care. And that, that really translates down to the quality of our product and into our customer satisfaction. And it really is just as cliche as it sounds, a, a family. Matt, one of the things that I have to do with my team a lot, because when the financial industry is do a lot of continuing education, we have to always be on top of things that are changing. Tax laws change, investment markets change, all kinds of things change. And so I'm constantly sending my people to learn new things. I'm thinking about the awning industry or the architectural products industry or the metal industry that Mm -hmm. uh, you use for decorative metals. How does that industry change? I would think that it doesn't change at quite the same pace, but maybe there's some technology improvements that have happened over the last few years. Is there a lot of change in the awning industry? So within the industry itself, not really. I mean, you know, with the way we've been doing you know, our seams and the way we fold our fabrics and, and weld them and put them together. It's, we've been pretty much doing it the same way for you know, 40, 50 years. However, what Hoover has really been leading, and I'd say leading the industry, but is within our processes and the machinery in which we adapt to, to accomplish the end product. We've adapted lasers and laser scanners from the geotech and oil and gas industry and are learning how to use it within the auto industry. So while there's now nowhere we can go and learn, they say, here's how you do it. We are kind of innovating that road to, to really integrate different products and processes into our, into our manufacturing process, whether it's an automated cutting machine, you know, because most awnings are cut by hand and draw, lines are drawn by hand. We implemented a automated cutting machine what, 11, 12, 13 years ago, maybe. And that kind of really revolutionized how we did you know, our processes. So you just put the coordinates or you put the laser readings into the cutting machine and boom, it spits out the canvas size that you need. And then you put it on whatever the, the frame is. If it were that easy, yeah. 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 But it, it's, it really is kind of that simple. We draw the frame in 3D AutoCAD and, and the software auto recognizes it, which we custom wrote this software with another company, a manufacturing company. And yeah, it, it really kind of just spits it out in a lot of ways. And Matt, so that, so that people can visualize some of the projects that your company has done in this community, where can they see some evidence of some of your work? Oh, sure. In Fort Lauderdale, you've got Las Olas Boulevard, and our awnings are all up and down the storefronts on Las Olas Boulevard. You've got you know, a lot of cheap cheesecake factories. Restaurants have our, our awnings. How about here in Jupiter? Is there a big awning you did here? Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of different awnings here. In Jupiter, you got Harborside. We did a bunch of awnings down at Harborside, South Florida Fairgrounds, the big, big canopies out there. Pretty much everywhere you go, probably I'd say 35, 40% of the fabric awning work out there is, is our product. Wow. Of course, just like everybody else, uh, Hoover's been impacted by what's going on in the world. So we've got this little pandemic. It's really kind of shut the world down for the last eight or nine months. Tell us what happened when COVID hit. What happened to the awning world? A lot of our customers are hotels and resorts and, and hospitality, and they got hammered, as we all know, with the shutdowns and everything else, and people are not traveling. I think going to really change our landscape over the next 12 to 18 months, but so much of it is still wait and see that it's, I don't think we really know how much it's going to impact us. It impacted our supply and getting fabric. It impacted the supply of getting hardware. 
so that the jobs we did have on the books, the customers really had to be patient. We had to communicate well with them and make sure they knew we were you know, really trying the best we could to, to finish their projects. But it's been an interesting learning curve, I think, for everybody. One of the things that you did, and I happen to know because I saw this firsthand, was that internally, because you've got some technical capabilities at the company, you pivoted a little bit. What did you start to do to try to pick up some business or some sales when fabric awnings weren't flying off the shelves? What we did is we looked at our customers and said, you know, how can we help them with our products and, and, and capabilities? And we looked at these big plexiglass partitions and said, well, maybe we'll get a plexiglass. And then I looked at the cost of the plexiglass and the cost of shipping the plexiglass and said, gosh, I think we can do this better. So we took an adapted marine grade clear eisen glass vinyl and, and built aluminum frames. And we're making, we still are making partitions for restaurants and, and hotels and, and, and point of sale services and really trying to give them a way to cost effectively and get back into business and protect themselves. Wow. The, it, the hospitality industry needs all the help it can get right now. It sure does. Hopefully in this next round of coronavirus stimulus relief, there will be a little bit more consideration for them because they didn't get much from the PPP because of the nature of how their uh, workforce operates and the forgivability features of the uh, PPP loans. The company is located in a couple of different places down here in South Florida. What do you do in each of those locations and where are they? In uh, Southeast Florida, we have a facility in Fort Lauderdale and another facility in West Palm. Each manufacture, each of those facilities manufacture frames and covers and and installation out of both. So we run full offices out of the Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach facilities. And then we have a Tampa location, which is a sales and installation outpost. So they don't do any manufacturing over there, but because of our close proximity, we're able to easily get product over there to them to install. So if I want an awning, does it matter where I am in Florida? Will you put in an, an awning for me? Sure, absolutely. We, we travel all over. We go to Puerto Rico with Cheesecake Factory and Dubai. We sent product uh, to buy Indian all over. So yeah, Georgia, we will travel mostly anywhere for you know, key customers and, and good accounts. Wow. Man, I want to shift gears a little bit, kind of get a little bit more insight on who you are and what your life has been like outside of the awning business. So you're a, a pretty young guy. We don't have to say how young, but I'll just tell everybody that he's a pretty young guy. He's got a couple of little kids, right? Two. Tell us what tell us what life is like at home. Oh, life life at home is a lot of fun, and it's, it's never stopping. I've got two kids, fourteen year old and sixteen year old. My sixteen year old just started driving, so that's been a challenge and, and really neat. But it's always filled with sports, and and we're always out doing something. My son's playing volleyball, or I'm sorry, my son's playing baseball. My daughter plays volleyball. There's always a ball flying around inside the house, so we're kind of an athletic family and like to have a little bit of fun. Where, and where are the kids going to school? So my son goes to the Benjamin School in Palm Beach Gardens, and uh, he just started as a freshman. He's really enjoying that. So great school. And, and he's uh, the baseball player. He's the baseball player. Yep. So he's playing a lot of travel baseball, and uh, hopefully we'll be playing with uh, the Benjamin team. And then my daughter goes to Jupiter High, and she's a sophomore and plays volleyball. So she's doing a lot of travel there as well. So having a great time. So is she the one that's just started driving? She's the one that just started driving. Well, yeah. that's kind of nice when you've at least got one that you don't have to take to school or because at 15 or 16 years old, they don't want to take the bus anymore. No. That's, that's pretty uncool. Yeah, exactly. So if somebody doesn't take them, they, they have to take themselves. Aside from the sports and the activities, Matt, you live in South Florida. You love to take advantage of the weather, I'm sure, and the water. What, do you, what else keeps the Carroll family busy? So we're a big boating family, and that's when things have been really nice with this pandemic is getting outside. My wife had a kidney transplant and with the medication autoimmune compromise, so we, uh, but we love getting out on the boat. You know, we used to do a lot more fishing, BK, before kids, but now it's a lot of sandbarring. So it's throwing a football and bouncing a volleyball out the sandbar and pretty much every weekend. If we're not on a sports field, we're out there on a the boat. Do you, do you get the boat out to the Bahamas, to the islands or anything at all? Not my boat. My boat's a little too small for that, but that's when we uh, jump on a friend's boat. That's the best kind of boat to have is a friend's big boat. It sure is. <laughs> yes, it, it absolutely is. If you, Especially if you can get to go down and enjoy some of the un spoiled parts of the world like the out islands and the bahamas that's really nice 
Matt, your family, your immediate family that's here, your dad, is he still involved in the business? Very lately, yeah. Basically, whatever he wants to do and enjoys doing, he'll be involved. He's your kind of outside individual personal board of director. Absolutely. We so, have lunch once a week and sit and talk about a lot of different things. And he'll tell me stories about you know how, how they operated and what they used to do. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun hearing about all that. And any other Carroll family members in uh, Hoover Architectural right now? Not in the media family. My sister is a uh, civil engineer. And okay. uh, so got a master's in civil engineering and she's loving the professional side of life. I offered her for her to come work with us, but I don't think that's a good fit for her. So that's All right. it, just dad and I. Uh, and what about your kids? Any conversation? Do they have any interest in what's going on? You know, they love listening to audiobooks when I have them playing in a car. Or, you know, they ask a lot of questions about, bo- um, you know, about business and politics and everything else. My daughter is heavy into the medical. She's in the medical program at Jupiter. So I don't think she'll come into business. But my son, maybe we'll see. Okay. No pressure. We'll That'd see. be nice. So that would be how many generations of Carols in the in the awning or or uh, canvas business? That'd be six. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. So as you look out on the horizon, you've got a company that you've shown can pivot, a company that can grow. What do you think is next? What do you want to do with Hoover Architectural? Is is there something that you say we just need to keep growing and here's how we're going to do it? We are actually, my goal is to expand our customer footprint, our customer geological footprint, right? So we have a wholesale business that um, started up about two years ago called Datum Wholesale Products, Datum Metal Products. That is strictly a wholesale product company and shipping to sign companies and on companies across the country. And I expect a lot of growth in, in that business. My goal there was to draw off of other markets, to draw off of different, you know, Georgia and, and, and Pennsylvania or whatever the, the different markets are. So that way we're not so tidal when it comes to our, our revenue. You know, and as far as Hoover, we're, we're so well established. We have such a strong reputation with not only residential, but our commercial consumers. Our goal is to keep that just nice and steady. You know, as we introduce new products, bring that in and whatever we can help our existing customers with and do more with them. That's what we're looking to do. And that's where the metal products side of the industry is going to be coming from. And so when you say metal products, for those of us that aren't in the construction industry, mm-hmm. what does that mean? It's it's more hard structure where fabric awnings, you know, have the valances that hang and, and are, are pretty and soft. The metal products are, are harder looking and they're a little more streamlined and kind of with today's modern architecture, eyebrows that go over the top of doorways and entrance ways, but they're also much stronger and can withstand hurricane force winds for, you know, set it and forget it kind of customers. They love the metal as opposed to the fabric awnings, but it's a totally different look. So it you know, provides all weather coverage, just like a fabric awning though. And so the idea is to keep you out of the rain and keep you out of the sun. And instead of using canvas, we're going to use metal. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Set it and forget it. Okay. If sales are increasing, if, if business uh, continues to grow, I guess my question would be, how do you do it? How do you get more business? How do you get more sales? Where does it come in from? And uh, are you guys actually marketing the business or is it just word of mouth? About 65% of our customers are word, come from word of mouth. That's, that makes up 65% of our business. And we're not, I guess you want to say, the cheapest product in town, right? We don't price point sell our products, but we have the highest quality products of all my competitors. Without really dropping prices and, and, and doing marketing efforts, it's, it's tough to grow that side of the business. So on the fabric side, I don't want to say we're saturated and we're, we're not going to see a ton of growth there, but we're innovating the ways that we build our products to compete a little bit better without compromising the quality of the products. And that's how we've seen growth on the fabric side. Otherwise, it'll be our, our growth is just strictly through diversification and into the metal products and into what more we can offer our existing customer base. If I'm building a commercial building or I'm building a new restaurant, is am I getting the name Hoover from my architect? Am I getting it from my builder? Am I getting it from the phone book? How, how, how are people finding you? A lot of the architects will know of Hoover, but primarily probably the general contractors and the commercial developers. We have a very, very strong reputation with them, but we are trying to really grow with the architects and 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 work with them with our AutoCAD capabilities and offering them you know, different ways that we can not only offer our construction services, but our professional services as well. Because that's something that we have more than any other company in South Florida. And 
Do you have salespeople that call specifically on those general contractors or architects to tell them about Hoover if they don't already know about you? Absolutely. So we have five different territory representatives and their job is to make sure we're on the estimators list and bid list for each one of the contractors. And and our goal is to really build relationships with these contractors and make sure that they all know the project managers on the site, the guys with boots on the ground, they know Hoover, you know, we'll get you out of a pinch. Our job is to make them look good to their customers. And that's that's what we strive to do every time. So they remember that. And that'll get you a ton more referrals. Heck yes. Every time you do it. I didn't give you any advanced questions to ask today. So I'm going to ask you a few things. And if there's something that pops out, fine. If not, we'll move on to the next question. But as you think about some of the business books that you've read, because you mentioned listening to books on tape with your kids, and the fact that your kids will actually listen to the books on tape is pretty impressive to me because my daughter and my wife tell me to turn that crap off whenever <laughs> I have it on the, in the car. Are there a couple of books that you would say, these have made a major impact on how I think about things in, in business? Sure. There's, there's a couple of jump out of me. It's, it's good to great. Rich dad, poor dad. Start with the why. There's another great one. A couple of sales books, you know, off the top of my head, I, I don't know the names of them, but, you know, and honestly, I don't listen to a, a large variety of books, but I will listen to the same ones over and over and over. I find myself catching a couple more, a few key points as I listen to them. And when I actually listen to them and put different things in practice, it means a little bit more to me and, and it resounds a little bit more next time I listen to that audiobook again. And how do you record this information? Is it in your head? Do you write it down? Do you keep a journal? Is is there some place where Matt's best ideas end up going? My dry erase board behind my desk. Okay. Yep. Dry erase board gets a couple of key things because I see it every day when I walk in my office. It's right there in front of me. Yeah, that's the dry erase board. This is what we need to focus on uh, <laughs> right now to move us forward. How about podcasts? Do you ever listen to podcasts? Is that something that you've incorporated? Honestly, I have not listened to a single podcast. Well, that's amazing. So maybe this will be the first one that you actually get to listen to. <laughs> open uh, me up, introduce me to it. And depending on what you're trying to learn about, a lot of times you can find out about a person, about an industry, or uh, about you know some segment of the market that you would have no idea even exists. <laughs> Who would think that there'd be a podcast with a guy that builds awnings somewhere <laughs> in the world? So that's good. The other thing I would ask you is, while we're on this topic, I asked you about books, I asked you about podcasts. Are there some slogans or some words of wisdom that you tend to live by? For example, I tell my staff all the time, the devil is in the details. We have to get the details right. I tell them a lot of other things, and I've got a lot of other slogans along those same lines. But is there something that you're always thinking to yourself or reiterating to your team? That's funny. My dad says all the time, devil's in the details, you know, and, and it's so true. Really, our, our biggest slogan is quality is what the customer ordered, whether it's quality of the, our service, of our communication, of our product. It doesn't matter. The customer ordered quality. In order to have that, you got to have quality team members. So that's one thing that really you know sticks with us. I, I've got on my on my desktop. I've got a on my my background on my desktop. It's filled with slogans, and it's just a daily reminder of of the you know start start with now. You know start with the why. You know tomorrow's I promise. Get it done now. You know, so I've got a whole bunch of slogans on there that off the top of my head I can't come up with. But. I love quality is what the customer ordered. I mean, there's no question that if you're in, in building a product that I can look at, I can touch it, and I can see it every single day, I don't want it to fade. I don't want it to rust. I don't want it to look like crap after a while. And so if you provide me with a uh, beautiful quality product, that's exactly what I'm looking for when I'm hiring somebody to put up an awning for me. The customers will always remember the quality because they see it every day to your point. The price, they forget that they pay maybe 10% more, but and when it's still there in 15 years and looks good, they go, yeah, that, that's exactly the right product. Yeah. Matt, my company, and I'm sure uh, most of the companies that you're familiar with uh, that are in kind of our small business circle down here in South Florida are involved in the community. We uh, try to make an impact and give back a little bit to the community. That's something that's always been very important to, to me in particular. What's Hoover do to uh, become a good corporate citizen in uh, South Florida? 
we get approached a lot of times for shade on playgrounds and especially means something to me when it's for kids and underprivileged kids, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. We support the West Palm Beach PAL, uh, Police Athletic League, West Palm Beach, and then also the ARC of Palm Beach a lot. It's really neat when you go over and you visit some of these kids and you're out there and they couldn't enjoy the rock garden and, and sensory garden before, but now you put some shade over the head and they can go out there and, and really enjoy it and, and see their face light up when they're touching different rocks and different things. It's amazing. So anytime that we try to help the kids, another thing we do is we ask our, our employees what, what matters to them. You know, so we'll work with a lot of schools and teachers, employees, spouses, to donate directly to the school or to charities to help the kids experience new and travel different to different places. So we, we try to really involve our, our employees in that. And I give a shout out to my friend who is a new executive director of the West Palm Beach Police Athletic League, Tay Edmonds. Tay is uh, just a fantastic young man. I saw a video he had put out the other day where he was running with the kids kind of doing a 50-yard dash. And of course, Tay, while he's a young guy, still isn't as young and and probably doesn't do a lot of 50-yard dashes. And of course, as he's doing this run, he pulls his hamstring. Very, very funny. But Police Athletic League and the ARC of Palm Beach are really two great organizations. I would thank Hoover a lot for input that they have in the community and what what they do. We've covered a lot of ground today. We've talked a little bit about your background. And so you said University of Central Florida, and that's the one in Orlando, right? Correct. And do they have a football team? Go Knights. Oh, they really? Sure do. They do. Okay. So if you're watching college football, is that who you're watching? Or are you a Gator or a Seminole fan? You know, I'm just a fan of sports. It's, it's neat watching UCF come from where, when I went to school, we had to drive 30 minutes to downtown Orlando to play in you know, the public's um, you know, football stadium. We've now got the football stadium on our own campus and are growing. I mean, we won a couple of bowls and beat the dogs. And I mean, we're, we're having a lot of fun with our sports program. So are their games televised, UCF? <laughs> are they ever on TV? Because I don't think I've ever seen one. Oh, yeah, they're on TV. It's usually you're looking at the uh, opponent that we're beating, you know, oh. the big name there. Okay, good. And then how about pro sports? What do you like? So, you know, I I used to watch a lot more football than I do now. But the Baltimore Ravens, they're kind of our hometown team because that's where we're born. The Miami Dolphins, kind of Hootie said it best, you know. I like to watch some football and go over to Kirby's here locally and watch the Ravens games. But then if there's a good baseball game on, I love watching a pitching duel between a pitcher and a batter. And uh, it's kind of where... I grew up playing baseball and and pitching, so I love watching a mental part of a baseball game. And it sounds like you've got a lot of Benjamin games uh, in your future to watch as well. I think so. So that's great. Matt, is there anything else that you'd like to add that you really see as something that our listeners would find interesting about Matt Carroll or Hoover Architectural Products? I think one of the biggest things that's been fun for me is, is this being a family company. You know, with Hoover being a family company and growing up around my uncles and my father and, and you know, working under and beside him and now learning from him. And, and it's, it teaches you so much more, um, I think, about life you know, than just business. Business is the tool that allows us to live life. And, but with my goal each and every day is to impact the lives of those around me. And, uh, and people that I work with. And if I can do that for you know, a handful of employees and, and friends, then I've succeeded in life. That's great, Matt. That's a phenomenal definition of success. I thank you for joining us today on the Business in Paradise podcast. Again, my name is Kerry Stamp. I'm the founder and CEO of Kerry Stamp and Company, a financial planning firm based right here in Tequesta, Florida. And my guest has been Matt Carroll with Hoover Architectural Products. And Matt has uh, shared a phenomenal story of an awning company that's been in business for more than 60 years or almost 60 years. He's a third generation of his family to run. Matt Carroll, thank you for joining me on Business in Paradise. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Business in Paradise Palm Beach podcast with Carrie Stamp, founder of Carrie Stamp and Company, Principal Wealth Advisors. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of the Commonwealth Financial Network. 
content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Carrie Stamp and Company is located at 110 Bridge Road to Cuesta, Florida, 33469. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Thank you.